so um, let's start right away. We lost five minutes as well. Hello, Kozala. Hello, um, everyone. Let me let me get the list here. And we have Kozala, MRC, Vishwanat, Danny, and Mark Fire. Welcome. And uh, gonna uh, start right away. As usual, it's a very packed. Um, uh, it's a very packed presentation and. Um, um, you know, I want to I want to start right away. So thanks a lot for joining in today. Um, today I'm going to talk about the plunge protection team, and most importantly, I'm going to talk about the potential uh, coming U.S. stock market crash. And I'll give you I'll give you a tool that you can use to understand what's going on. How good is that? Okay. So let, let me start. Let me start uh, right away. I'm going to talk. Uh, I'm going to make a brief introduction. Talk about the PPT, the, the plunge protection team. Does it exist? And uh, I'll give a few answers. I'll review, review, review and op opinions from uh, from some players, and then I'll spend a couple of uh, slides on um, understanding whether the economy and the U.S. stock market are healthy. Uh, I'll uh, uncover some of the uh, a couple of rules I use to um, to model uh, algorithms, and maybe they model the PPT activity as well. We don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some something interesting there. Um, I'll, Give you a brief story of my um, intervention in the money uh, show uh, in Toronto in 2014. That's going to be funny there, and um, and then I'll show you 15 years, uh, 15, uh, 115 years of price action and market psychology and how we can model them, and the relation we have with the PP with the PPT, uh, as well as market psychology, as well as what can happen, uh, what can happen in the future. So. It's quite interesting, uh, uh, quite interesting, and and um, an actually uh, packed presentation here. Let me just. Uh, if you have any question, you just let me let me know, and uh, and I'll answer the, your question. In the, uh, at the end, how you can uh, what, what is going to probably happen, and you can, can protect yourself. Uh, also, I want to remind you that on fsv.com you find. Uh, um, you find an offer for my September 2015 session of my Fipsol Camera Coaching Program. Um, I will uh, give, uh, I, will, I will offer charts, I will offer my views in this uh, presentation, of course. Uh, uh, I cannot be, nor F Street can be responsible for uh, for uh, the outcome of your decisions. So um, uh, this is my only my, uh, my, my personal opinion. Um, if you are watching this presentation, please stop, stop it here, pause it here, and read the disclaimer. Uh, just a few lines about myself. I'll just say that uh, you know I started in 2001, worked with three, uh, with a number of uh, men mentors. Three are the most important ones, um, and um, in 2006 I committed on research and also joined the. International Federation of Tech Analysts, and I have three published uh, papers so far, 18 hours of total market exposure, and started FIPSTalker.com, uh, a FIPSTalker trading in the period 2012-2014. Um, okay, why FIPSTalker? You know that they use only a bunch of Fibonacci numbers, and I, and I use Fibonacci in a non-conventional way. Uh, the stalker part, uh, it's related to Purtsui or tracking stealthily. Uh, and not and not observe persistently a person, okay? And uh, you know my uh, edge is starting the sequence of measured move and the um, movements in the price, and then uh, drill down in the smaller time frame and look at uh, participation along certain levels, whether that participation breaks the participation in the opposite direction. So, what is the plunge protection team? Well, it's not a secret because if you go on Wikipedia, as I did here, you will find a description of it. Of it. it was a, originally the headline uh, in an article in the Washington Post, and it's a colloquial term to indicate the president's working group on financial markets. Now, uh, its actual name is Working Group on Financial Markets. It was created by Ronald Reagan in, in 1988. And this day should not surprise you. It came just after the 1987, uh, which was the crash 
uh, of the uh, stock market. And what are the goals? Enhancing the integrity, efficiency, and competitiveness of U.S. financial markets, um, maintaining investor confidence, study the major issue raised by October 1987 events, of course, and identify uh, actions to carry out um, uh, to carry out the recommendation that they identify. So, most importantly, they consult with exchanges, clearing house, regulatory bodies, major market participants, private sector, very, 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 very uh, uh, important team of people here, uh, which actually, uh, you know, exert quite some control and power on the market, even if that's just uh, coming from uh, moral suasion. So, uh, so did they prop up market during downtown, downturns? PPT expressed the opinion that the working group has been propping up the market during down to downturns. Some values of congressmen in the U.S. have charged the working group with going well beyond the legal mandate. Some investment research firms have suspected that after the 2008 crisis, uh, the Fed and U.S. government were supporting stocks. And uh, there are also claims that uh, the working group is an orchestrated mechanism that attempts manipulation in the end of market crash. And I'm going to show you some uh, opinions from, from market players, uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, mind, though, that this presentation is not a theoretical presentation about PPT. Uh, the second half of this presentation is about... Uh, chart is about the SP500, and now we go to understanding what's going on uh, uh, at the moment and uh, how we, we need to protect ourselves in the future. So does the PPT intervene using moral situation to attempt to convince banks to, to buy, uh, or do they d directly buy stocks? Should they do both, actually? And I think, I think we, you, know, uh, I, you know, there are proofs all around. Now, on October 6, 2008, the, um, the working group issued a statement indicating it was taking multiple actions available to it in order to attempt to stabilize the financial system. And you remember, well, the situation in 2007 and 2008, uh, the, financial, the world financial system was on the, on the verge of a crackdown. And, and of course, you might think, well, what the PPD does is positive because it allows the market to stay afloat. And uh, in 2008, although purchases of stock was not part of the stadium, the government anyway uh, wind up, winded up um, uh, you know, owning shares in firms uh, which he provided, he provided loans to AG and, and, and a number of other uh, banks and, and financial companies. And, um, and you know, you can you can look at different opinions on on the working group on financial markets, and and of course, you should do your research as well. Here is a link you can look at to look at different viewpoints. Okay, now my question is, how do you stop a tr train or trains like this? Uh, this is, was this was March two thousand and nine. Look at where the market went. Uh, most re more recently, October 2014, how do you stop a train like this? Well, you know, where the VIX, uh, it, it goes above 55 and, uh, and you know, and, and there is no seemingly, uh, you know, the, uh, any, any uh, you know, any indication that this market will stop. So how do you stop these trains? Well, Let's look at some of the opinions uh, in relation to PPT. Robert Kiyosaki, probably you know him. It's one of the best educators, in my, uh, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, financial education. Uh, in his book, Second Ch Chance, he uh, mentioned, whenever a crash occurs, a mysterious no-name buyer enters the game via futures market. And remember, I mean, futures is always an, uh, an option on futures. It's always the, uh, the way to, uh, to operate here. Purchasing massive quantity of derivatives through large banks like J.P. Morgan, Goldman, Goldman Sachs, and offshore accounts. These invisible buyers, um, sorry, buyers have the power to uh, stop crashes. And uh, so now, next time you see a market miraculously uh, recovering, you should really think PPT, okay? And and not only PPT, also 
prevents and could prevent and is preventing, I believe, uh, other markets like silver and gold from rising and reflecting the real, uh, you know, uh, the real situation of dollar inflation in the in U.S. So the PPT at work uh, is keeping the market propped up until the day when manipulation will now longer work and i'm showing you i'm going to show you some of the reason and the behind this possibility this protects gambles of course this is not good you you might think okay but wait a moment giuseppe i mean ppt is saving the markets is saving the life of uh, and the life saving of uh, of uh, of people who invest in the in the um, in the stock market yes that's one one side of it but the reality is that this behavior really protects gambles and goes against the free market forces because if it prevents investment money instead of going into the casino, the stock market, uh, you know, it prevents to go it into businesses and factories and create jobs, which is what the U.S. need and the world need the most. Any other opinions? Um, uh, how are the gold that market would say? Things were looking grim uh, in October, the, on October the 15th, and uh, sorry, this is 2014, of course, it's not 2015. Uh, I'm not looking at the future. So things were looking grim last week, and it's speaking about uh, the week before, sorry, the week after, October 15, especially on Wednesday the 15th, we dial down 460 points and VIX in the mid-20s, a classic panic attack, okay? In the market, and uh, and what happens? Uh, it happens that Fed uh, uh, bank speakers come in and say, "Well, inflation is below two percent." You know, the committee will still have an option to ramping up a QA, and uh, we don't plan to raise rates until 2016. All positive, and and of course. And now here, James Bianco from uh, Bianco Research says they're afraid the stock market going down, and they will be blamed. So. Once, once the Fed came out and said this, people got got the message. What's the translation? We got your back. Don't don't worry. Buy the buy the low here, and um, and you know what price did. And by the way, that day was was this day here, was exactly this day here. Okay, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this day. Uh, I was at the Toronto. Money issue, and I'll tell you an episode there. So that's when all this happened, okay? Um, if you have any questions, just write them down. I hope you find this uh, intriguing and interesting here. So Bianco reports uh, on manipulations that happened on August the 31st, 2012, September 22nd, 2015, and August 27, 2010, 2008, the fall of 1998, uh, long terminal capital management, you'll remember that, and of course, the crash, 1987. The PPT was created after the crash, but probably there was some sort of manipulation before the crash, and in fact, uh, Bianco from Bianco Research also says, after the 1987 stock market crash, uh, when the Dow fell 22.6% in a single day, it was the uh, uh, Black Monday there, um, uh, Greenspan fed bought 17 billion worth of bonds at the time was a lot of money, it was a load, a lot of money, and declared the central bank ready to serve as a source of liquidity. So, in reality, the PPT exists as well before it was formally incepted, uh, in a way, right? Uh, would you not believe, would you not believe that, um, that actually, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, some intervention had happened in 1987. Well, you know, it's documented. It's not that we have, it's not secrecy here. As in 1987, uh, the specter of 1929 will haunt, still haunts the Fed, and uh, they're afraid of the market going down. That's what says Bianco here. So. What happened on October 15, 2014? I mean, uh, I'll let uh, Zero Edge here uh, show what happened. We had all this market moving lower, the VIX moving higher into the mid-20 here. And that's an indication of increasing volatility. Look at this market. We were, they were all crashing. And also the yields, uh, the bond yields were crashing here. So, um, you know, there were these... There was this situation here with no liquidity, with no liquidity, and uh, and what happens after that? Bam! There is a bounce. U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, 
uh, SP500 day bounce. So look at the bounce here. Look at the volume coming in uh, after a moment in which the liquidity of the market dry, dried up. Okay, and um, and it's uh, funny that uh, um, uh, you know uh, Zero Hedge says PPT is in the house, and um, <laughs> so uh, look at what happens here. This volume. Market gets back to the VWAP here, contraction of volume here, and then bam, volume coming in. Uh, and there is a guy here saying, e mini liquidity still at regular lows for this time of the day. That was 1945. 1009, wow. More traders in the CME Treasury futures as of 10 a.m. than the previous record day. Okay, so that's the power of the PPT. So um, in a recent post, February 24, 2015, um, Zero Hedge reports, reports uh, uh, an interview from uh, Dr. Pippa Malgrim, former member of the US President Working Group on the financial market. She says it's not conspiracy theory, it's conspiracy fact. It's conspiracy fact. There is no price discovered anymore by the market. Governments impose price on the market. And this is Dr. Pippa Malgrim. And uh, what is this? It's basically the rise of the geo geopolitics and the breakdown of the social contract, whereas, you know, the capital does not care anymore what, uh, you know, uh, labor does. That's the way I see it. That's the way actually uh, uh, Dr. Mal Malgren sees that. And she explains what also what she foresees as an end game for the financial crisis. And I suggest you, you watch that interview as well. So I want to depress you, but I'll need to run through those two, um, uh, these two uh, slides here very, very briefly. Okay. So sorry for, uh, you know, sorry for doing this, but I think we have to have, we have to give, we have to get the right perspective here. And it's only two slides, I promise. Um, so PPT is uh, Plunge Protection Team. I introduced that, Linda, at the very beginning of the presentation, and it's uh, it's also formally called the President's um, Working Group on Financial Markets. It's a, it's a group uh, working in U.S. It's part of the President Office, okay? And they do some activity on the market as we are going to see. Now, let's look at the economy, U.S. stock market, and are they healthy? Now, let's look at what happened in the recent, uh, recent history. Ronald Reagan issued the plunge protection team, the president's work group on financial markets, to do what? To actually protect the markets from uh, events uh, like 1987. Bill Clinton repealed the Glass-Steagall Act, 1932. Basically, that act prevented commercial banks from being investment banks as well. When you remove that now, everybody can play the casino. Because, you know, the business, the stock market is open for business to bankers uh, with government protection because, you know, every time the Fed pushes money into the market, it means the U.S. Uh, government uh, gets, uh, the, you know, gets the money from the Fed uh, for a fee and then pays uh, the banks. And who pays? Uh, of course, uh, uh, U.S. people pays for that. So... Bush uh, actually did the MMA, the Medicare Modernization Act. So he, he made seniors happy, but she was broke, basically. And regarding the MMA, the Medicare Modernization Act, the U.S. Comptroller General David Walker has called this act the most fiscally irresponsible piece of legislation since 1960s. That's not nice. Obama, well, you know, we know that he extended... Uh, and 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 uh, offered the Obamacare. Now you might see all these things as positive things, right? But they're not because you are paying for them. And I'm Italian, living in Canada. Uh, I'm, I'm paying for that too because every time U.S. dollar is inflated, all the world pays. Do you understand that? I mean, the U.S. dollar is the is the reserve, is the world reserve at the moment. Okay. That, to be very, very blunt, sorry, sorry, sorry for that, but you know, uh, I, I don't go around these things. You know, it's it's uh, it's it, it is what it is. So let me say things as they are, okay? At least between us, between friends, let me say these things. <clears throat> so now, QE money, uh, 
uh, is not getting at the moment into the real economy, and you know that very well. I mean, you know very well that there are 45 million people on food stamps in the U.S. I mean, the richest, uh, strongest uh, country in the world. Uh, and also, you know, fortunately, the one with the highest debt as well. Millions of Americans are footstep and high inflation, which is uh, our invisible tax. And I say our, the reason why I'm very passionate about this is because I'm paying for it as well. Everybody's paying for it. Not only you, U.S. people. You have to understand that, guys, I mean, how, how the world is it works these days and how everything is connected. So trillions and exactly 117 trillions of unfunded liabilities which is the Fed debt, Medicare, and Social Security. They total an outstanding $117 trillion. I mean, I cannot even think about, about this. This is about one-tenth of the overall, one-tenth of the overall derivatives in the world, which is estimated to be one quadrillion, which means... 1,000 trillions, okay? Now, these are incredible numbers. I cannot even even uh, represent them in my mind. I mean, I know what they are, and you know what they are. Now, what's the problem here? And this is the source of second chance. Uh, I, 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 you know, I strongly suggest you read this book. It's a very good one. I mean, easy to read as well if you are, uh, you know, if you are not into uh, into uh, financial concept, very very easy to 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 read. And if you have any questions, please uh, just write them down and um, and answer them. So banks are still in trouble due to house foreclosure. I mean, it's not that uh, things in 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 US are good. They maybe they want us to believe they're good, but they're not. And 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 of course. There is a reason for that, right? That is in the trillions and adds up to future monetary inflation, which, which means that, you know, uh, children and grandchildren will, will, will need to pay for this. The U.S. world's largest debt or nation, uh, and, and the U.S. dollar is also the world's largest liability, unfortunately. And Ludwig von Mises said from the Australian School of Economics, said, government cannot make men richer, but it can make him poorer. And, and that's, you know, and that's unfortunately what I believe is happening here. Now, the bus cycle is far from over. Um, and don't, don't, don't expect that price, seeing the stock market higher means that, you know, we are, everything is good. And, and another period like, uh, the 1954 to 2000 is going to start. I don't believe that's the case. And markets are higher in, the, in nominal terms, which means in, in, in price value, but not in real terms, because if you consider, uh, you know, uh, the inflation, which is very, very high, uh, I believe it's 8% in U.S., uh, although it's not reported as that. Uh, I've been traveling in U.S., I mean, I went last year, and, and I could see, uh, you could see that. I mean, if you observe, if you are, if you actually come from a different environment, you see certain things. And I've been traveling to U.S. in the past as well. When I, when I worked for Accenture, I went to Chicago a number of times, Boston, uh, New York. I mean, I, I traveled uh, U.S. in the past. So I could see the difference. So this is the way it works. There's a critical size expansion, like the, uh, the money pushed into the system. And so people who cannot afford the houses buy houses. Uh, that creates inflation, a bubble bust, like 2006, the real estate market in the U.S., but, I mean, the real estate market is just yet another market, okay? All the markets were the same. And actually, if you are interested, you can go back and, and watch last month's presentation on the real estate market crash, potentially, in Australia, Canada, Canada and New Zealand. And you'll see, I gave a lot, I gave a lot of information about how uh, uh, market cycles work, okay? So, watch that presentation, because it can be very, very interesting. So, a bubble bust brings a recession with government intervention, and that's the main problem. According to Von Mises, that's the main problem. When government trying to fix the, uh, the economy, that's when they break it. Okay, so that produces unemployment and um, again credit contraction, deflation, a bank increases because obviously banks do well only when they lend money. And this could potentially, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but it could potentially bring to hyperinflation and, and something more like that. So I promise that's the uh, only uh, two slides I have on this. And, and now we start, we dive into charts. So current GDP and fiscal situation does not justify such higher prices in the stock market. And now we know who's behind it. Who's behind it, Linda? Is the PPT. And um, let me show you something here. So, uh, 
the source here is Doug Ebernard. I, I think he, you know, is he, he analyzed uh, analyzed the situation in a very good um, uh, way. Now, before I get into October 15, 2014, let me give you a little bit of background coming directly from my uh, coaching program here. Uh, I will offer you a couple of uh, simple way of modeling price. Okay, and the first one is very simple. When you see a market moving higher, like uh, like in this one, in this case, the market can come and retrace the 50% from A to B here and then bring price higher, okay, into, into targets, into some targets here. That's the way I use Fibonacci in a very simple way. And, of course, the market can move in different ways. And the source, again, is the FIP Store Camera Coaching Program. Now, let me offer you a recent example here. It's a short for the euro. This is the euro dollar daily. And when we trace from A to B here, we were able to capture price reacting within this window here and moving lower. Moving where? We have a first target here. So I believe that eventually we're going to hit that first target. So it's an example of application of this rule to current market. Uh, when I see another example here, SP500 lows to highs and captures the 50, in the 50% it captures the recent, the recent participation. Who's behind this? I believe there are algos behind this, not necessarily the PPT. I think the PPT uh, intervenes only when things are very, very dire, okay? Not in this situation. In this situation, there are algorithms that I believe actually have very strong effects in modern market. Indeed, in some markets, uh, the volume traded by algorithms is uh, higher than, than 80%. Take the, this market, for example, the uh, SP500 in the future. Okay, so uh, there are other ways the market can move. And again, I'm only showing you simple way of modeling price. In my, uh, uh, in my uh, coaching program, I show um, uh, different ways of doing that. But these are more than enough. When the price start moving, more than enough for the purpose of this presentation, of course. When the price start moving in an extended way, I trace high to high and... Uh, uh, remember before when I said I don't use 23.8%, uh, I don't use 382 uh, shallow retracing. Why? Because I have different ways of tracing, um, um, tracing Fibonacci, which actually model market algorithms. And um, an example here of a market uh, moving initially uh, in uh, a traditional measure move and then getting into the first, second target and the market changes speed and now we start modeling it using and tracing from highs to highs here and we're capable of capturing the next area of, of, um, uh, of support here and the price gets in the first target. Are all going to market? You tell me. Okay, so, um, and this is not just a hand-picked example, you'll see this again, again, again. Okay, so once we have established this, let me tell you, recount you what happened on October the 16th, 2014, at the Monet, uh, Toronto Money Show, okay? Uh, FX Street graciously uh, invited me to talk at the Toronto Money Show. I was very happy about that. And that was the date, was October 16, 2014. And um, that session was very interesting. You can find it on uh, the live version of FX Street here, FX Street Sessions. And here you have the link as well. If you're interested, the title of that presentation is A New Fire Philosophy for Trading Success in Modern Markets. And of course, I touch on um, on algorithms as well. Now, uh, uh, so, so there is the recording as well. The quality is not great, but it's there. Have a look at it. It's very interesting. Now, after my, my presentation, I went to sit to, uh, in another room, uh, and there was a colleague who was actually um, is a is a is a is an, inv an invest investment manager. It's um, he manages millions of uh, private client money. I was recounting that, you know, it was in uh, the market was was tanking as I showed you in the chart before, and it was actually in defensive mode. So trying to catch the next move higher. So, uh, but he was actually, he had actually sold part of, uh, of the stocks he held for clients. And, uh, and at some point he said, does anyone in the room know what's going on? 
And in genuinely, I, I was the one who uh, raised the hand. So I did this. Now, I'm not as handsome as this gentleman here. In fact, if you look at the picture here, he says dreamtime.com. But <laughs> besides, besides that, so everybody, of course, looked at me and laughed at me. And, and, and then the things were just dismissed. So uh, I, I was the only one raised my hand. And I'm not saying this thing to, bus, to boost guys, but... Uh, uh, just because that's what happened, and uh, and if I did it, you know, I think anybody can do it. So let me show what I did it and why I was so certain. The um, the previous um, in the in the in the previous uh, three days before, two days before, I had this um, review on my uh, on my um, YouTube, and I showed clearly an extension along, which is this one, and. Um, uh, and it was 19, uh, 1830 at that point, okay? I said, uh, the way, if you know the way I look at the market, I, I identified this level before the fact, and then I used a technique which was, which is called fib stalking timing, and I studied the sequence of measured move on the opposite direction, okay? When that sequence fails, if that sequence fails, uh, it means that the participation is coming from this larger level it's actually stronger than the participation that is pushing this price lower. So if, if the participation is stronger, it means that there's a good possibility for that level to work. Okay, so you can go and watch the video. It's there. I have all, uh, over 700 videos in my uh, YouTube channel. And in the minute nine, I trace exactly this level here. So when I went, when I was two days after I was at the Toronto Money Show, that's what I had in mind. And when, when I was asked... Do you know what's going on? I said, yes, maybe I know there is a level that we are watching. And if the algorithms that are short in this price would be weaker than the algorithms that are ready to enter at this level, we might get, in, we might be into something. And now you understand what happens, right? Um, and what happened is that we got a bounce right at uh, um, the low, I think it was 1827. Uh, so, uh, so I, I had this uh, this level in mind before. Now it's not. I don't want to. I'm not here to say how good I am. If I did it, you can do it as well. And uh, what is more important, on the other hand, is the relation between algorithms and PPT. So uh, the point here is that if PPT has this uh, huge effect on market uh, and the market are controlled, how do they do that? And I believe that they do it through algorithms as well, and they buy at levels and in ways that to us seem so natural, and they buy at areas uh, where the effects actually resembles the natural flow, uh, flow of the market. So I call these algorithms uh, program trading, and actually program trading is just a class of these algorithms on the market, but I believe it's very, very powerful. And I believe it models the psychology of the market. I'm going to show you uh, how. Now, you might ask, okay, what's the, uh, what's the psychology of the market? The psychology of the market is the overall group uh, psychology of, of traders taking as a group. So it's the aggregated behavior and effect on price of trade. That's what I, what, I, uh, what I define the psychology of the market. Now, how do we know that psychology is taken into account? Well, uh, you know, uh, first of all, all these programs trading really including the, include that 50% retrace that I showed you before. Uh, market moving higher first, then retrace, and when it stops, it stops right there. And and but that's not the only thing, of course. It's just a simplification. Okay. So applied now, that's the beauty of it. And this is the beauty applied to the market data of over 100 years. When we apply those two rules, simple rules that I gave you before, they actually work. They actually explain price. So that's the beauty of it. And don't get my word for it. I'm going to show it to you. So the researchers work on Dow Jones in the early 90s, since the early 90s, and later markets like the SP, SP90 and SP422. You have to know that before the SP became the SP500, there were other version, other version of the SP, okay? And and the beauty is that when you apply these retraces on these markets, they well they work well before computers were even invented. 
So the question is then, if algos are in control of the market and they explain uh, price, and they certainly do in some um, high volume market. I showed you some example before. Uh, the fact that these uh, traces work on, um, on price that was printed well before computers were invented means that these algorithms capture something fundamental, uh, fundamental about the way the market works. And that's the reason why we don't see them. And this is the beauty of all this. And this is for me, when I, when I discovered this, uh, uh, you know, for me, it was a aha moment. I mean, it was really exciting, actually. And I hope it's being exciting for you as well at this moment. So back to the future then. Let's apply modern rules to, uh, to model past markets. And, uh, and I'm going to show you in the next five minutes a proof that program trading picked up a fundamental intrinsic behavior of how actually the market works okay so this is very important guys and and this is also a connection with the ppt because this is the reason why we don't see the ppt at work and we don't see the algos at work because they actually internalized the way the market works so let's look at some secular charts here and it's very difficult to obtain these charts but uh, um, I, I was a friend who uh, actually provided them to me. Now, when we look at the Dow Jones and we trace from lows to highs and the highs of 2007 here, we get an area of participation. Why on earth the market stopped right there? You tell me. Okay, first of all, I think that the market could never stop there if there was no participation from any from any party. Because, see, uh, when... Um, when um, uh, th that's not that's not the way the market and people work. The market is a bunch of emotion. It's the result of three main emotions: the fear of losing money, the fear of losing an opportunity, and the fear of um, uh, and, and greed. These are the three emotions that run the market. Now, when price is here, who on earth is willing to buy this market? Tell me. Are people willing to buy this market? No. So, you know, who actually has intervened at this 50% and why 50%? Okay, now you start seeing why the importance of these numbers. Okay, so ask, your, ask, ask yourself, who came into play there? And look at the beauty of this 50% retracement capturing this market. Let's say S&P secular charts. Um, um, uh, yeah, you can see it as a 50% discount, but would you buy it a 50% discount? How many people would buy it for that up to? I, you know, it's, it's a good, I mean, it's a good logical explanation. Is the market logical? The market is emotional. So even if you see that discount, you might not be willing to, to buy or have, have the money to buy. Now, let's look at the SP500 here from the lows in, uh, in 1900 to, again, this time the highs, sorry, the, the same highs on 2008 here. And this is a logarithmic uh, uh, chart. So that's the reason why it's compressed. You have 50 here and then you have 1,000 here. So it's a little bit compressed on the upside. Uh, and uh, that's only for representation purposes. But this is a 50% retrace, okay? Um, it's not indifferent. Uh, it's still a 50% retrace from this level, from, from 1,900 rather, to 2008. And where the market stopped? It stopped right there. Now, remind, uh, this is the SPY, okay? Uh, or issue, I should say the, the SP500 spot, okay? So can you see that in place again? And again, here the, the, the chart is in logarithmic scale. So that's the reason why you see that. Now, uh, you may say, okay, but, you know, so is that the first time we had a 50% retrace? No, we had that in the past as well. Lows in 1900, two highs in 72 here. We captured 74 at the 50% retrace. Did someone participate there? Maybe this time, you know, it was too early. Maybe, maybe the... Um, you know, maybe the U.S. government just uh, enticed or uh, did the moral situation for to banks to, to buy this market. Where this market went, to the first target, and it went also to the second target. But 
Now look at the beauty of this. Now this is a, 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 a traditional measured move. Now the market went into the first and second time and continue much higher into 300, 300 and some. Look at how the 1987 crash extension can be captured. When we, when we trace, and we use all simple rules, when we trace from highs in 72 to highs in 87, <laughs> look at where the market stopped. <laughs> And, you know, believe me, I think that was manipulation at that time as well. And actually, you know, uh, that's the main reason that the PPT was created. Okay. So, uh, you know, if that's, this does not give you a proof of, uh, you know, of the existence of algorithms, the fact that they actually implement very simple rules that uh, go uh, undiscovered uh, and unknown and uh, secretly, uh, you know, um, actually uh, model this uh, this market. I don't know what I can offer you. So let's look at the SP500 and where it is headed. Now, the SP500, as I showed you before, when we trace from lows to highs, the uh, SP500 futures had its high on 2000s not on 2008. So there's a slight difference between the SPY, which is the ETF, and the future, which is the uh, ES, uh, E-mini future, okay? So there is a slight difference because the E-mini had its stop on 2000s and the ETF has its stop on 2008. Doesn't make a big difference. What you observe here is that, if you remember, we had, you had the low at 667, and the entry, the 50% level of 7.78. So what is that leading us? Yeah, the first target is 1916. We already went through that target. So the second target is around 2,500. Okay, so that's what I believe where the market is going. And here I'm showing you again that uh, chart. Now, mind here that this is a continuous contract for the SP500. So there is backwardation. And that's the reason why you see this price going below the 61.8% uh, level. But you remember that the low is 667. So this market was well within this area here, okay? Again, the reason why you see these lower prices here because this price is recalculated um, because um, E-mini future trades in uh, in, in uh, contracts, four contracts every year, and there is uh, uh, there is um, uh, there is uh, there are different rules that you can use to compose all this price together, and that provokes this effect. But when you were here in 2009, you would see this uh, the current future trading uh, at at a 667 low. Okay, so we hit the first target here, um, and. And we had 1916, but that was on the SPY. On the future is 2012, okay? 2012. And um, now the, uh, the October 14 call is also shown here. And, and basically it was the high from the high in 2001 to new highs. And that's how I captured that level that uh, when, I, uh, when I was asked whether I knew what was going on in the market, I raised my hand. That's the way I capture it and applied just one of the rules that I have. Okay, so where is the market going? The market went into the first target and it's above that first target, so it might be going into that second target. So uh, what is the second target? On the future is 26.34, okay? So we are still here. Is there a possibility for this market uh, to move there? Well, you bet it. You know how this market can move when quantitative easing money is pushed into the market and when the PPT steps in to, you know, to stop, to stop the market moving lower. Okay. These are opinions, guys. I mean, I'm not saying that you should act on uh, this, but that's what I see. And so the market could get into 2634. Now, if he gets into 2634, he gets into the second target. Okay, so we can actually uh, study what happens if the market gets that. How we trace from this level to whatever high is going to be printed at that point. Okay, now 
this smaller measure move here, the October 2014 call here, went to its first target, and now it's moving into its second target as well. So seeing price at 22.22 should not surprise you. Why? Because there, are, there, there is a group of algorithms that actually showed clearly participation at 18.11. At the time, it was 18.30 area. And again, this is different because of the way this price is calculated. And, and actually, you should not be surprised if price is going to get into 22.22. Okay, now what's next then? If the market gets, and that's the key I'm giving for you to interpret this market, okay? That's the uh, that's the, uh, the present and the gift for you today. If this market continue higher into that second target, and remember that second target would be 26.34, and algorithms will do whatever it takes to bring price into their targets. This is the second target, okay? If he gets there, if price gets there, what can we do? We can trace from high to high, applying one of the simple rules that I gave you, and you can use these rules now forever. And actually, you can use this rule to understand what's going on in the market. So once we get there, we could easily get a brisk move like this. And this could only take get take few weeks going from two, uh, 6342123. Okay, that's 500 uh, pips, uh, sorry, uh, points uh, correction here. What does this look like? It looks like 9087. The question is will the PPT step in? Will it have the money, the power? Will US have the money, power? and to step in and in increase, keep increasing debt in order to stop this. And that's the big question. And that's where the possibility for a US market crash um, is hidden, okay? So if that does not happen, if that doesn't happen, the market does this, where are we going to go? Well, some people believe that this market is due for a 70% retrace, okay? so. That's our good news, but you have now the tools to understand what's going on. And the beauty of this is that if the market makes that brisk correction and moves below this level and then it's propped up, that's what we're going to get. And this is going to become a, uh, a very good opportunity to enter short this market. Okay, And that's what I know uh, what I what I plan to do if that's if that's if that's what happens so uh, this is what I wanted to uh, what I wanted to present today I hope you found you found this interesting so let me recap and if you have any question you can reach me at fibstalker at gmail.com so we define what PPT plans protection team is and what it does in the market we started the opinions of a number of market analysts, as well as entrepreneurs like uh, Robert Kiyosaki, for example, we introduced some simple rules to model modern articles, and 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 these rules are at the base of the, the the secret I give you in order to understand what's going on on the SP500. I provided examples of applying those rules in current markets and. Um, showed the potential relation between algorithms and the activity of PPT. For sure, the October call is the result of PPT activity. I showed you the charts. I showed you the volume before. I showed you what people were telling before, what was the volume of DSP uh, futures before, and, and what was, uh, was after. I showed you um, a zero edge coming in and saying, you know, Everything is dire here. This is the time for the PPT to step in. And what they did, they stepped in, of course. I demonstrated the linkage between algos and market psychology and projected the SP500 higher, potentially into that area, the 2500, 2634, and, and, uh, and uh, the lower, uh, very probably 2132, and potentially 1300, which is the 50% from lows to all time highs at 2634, or even a 70% retrace into 7790. Uh, so, Volta uh, is asking for, um, uh, for the email. Uh, you go, that's the email as well. You have in the next. Um, 
no problems, uh, Arinda. I just want to, uh, you know, remind if you're interested in understanding how that works, uh, you know, um, uh, there is a link under the webinar. You can uh, you can go there and sign up for the Fixed Token Mail Coaching Program. Thanks a lot, uh, everyone. Thanks a lot, Adinda, for organizing this. Uh, oh, we still have five minutes. Uh, no problems, no problems. So tell me when we have to stop. I'll just um, I'll just continue here. If there are any questions uh, in relation to what we what uh, we uh, saw here, uh, uh, as I said, I mean, there is a link below the webinar. Go there and look at the uh, FSWIT offer for the FIPS token metals coaching program. In the program, that what I do is is actually starting this, uh, uh, I mean, offering you uh, a, a detailed account on how to use these measure moves to identify algorithms uh, and their effect on price, and particularly I want to uh, I want to remind again uh, the risk uh, here, and um, and also uh, you know let me let me tell you um, uh, let me go back to um, to this and and uh, elaborate a little bit about this. Now imagine that October um, October uh, move lower. Okay, so we had the price correcting like this. And I had that 1830 level below. Okay, so how do you how do you get involved? You just don't get involved when and if price gets to that level. You never do that. One of the things I teach in my coaching program is managing risk. Risk is, is number one. So what I do, on the other hand, is starting applying the same rules and other rules. That I'm going to teach you how to model the uh, reaction of price as the price moves lower. And what happens is that, you know, when you have that 50% level, or that level that you are timing, if the participation from algorithms and the PPT comes into the market and it's enough to break the sequence of measured moves, okay, that's an indication that the power on the larger time frame is stronger than the power on the smaller time frame. And that's where you get involved. Okay. So you never get involved at the level. We need to wait for confirmation. The point is that I don't get confirmation from traditional tech analysis. Indeed, I don't use traditional tech analysis at all. I only use uh, Fibonacci level and, uh, you know, I, I use them in a non-conventional way. So, guys, this is all what I wanted to tell you today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I think it's very powerful, the uh, information you have learned here. And uh, I think you know now that we could call the market rigged, if you wish. It's a large casino it has become. And, uh, and you have to be very careful. And, and you may say, well, I'm not interested in trading this market if it's, uh, if it's uh, controlled. Well, but why not taking the, um, the opportunity uh, till it's there to actually trade the same way these algorithms do? So um, thanks again. And um, if you have any questions, you can write, uh, you can write down at, um, uh, you know, you can write down at the, um, uh, at um, fibstalker at um, gmail.com and you can visit my website fibstalkertrading.com as well and um, I have a newsletter uh, you can sign up for free there as well if you are interested and I have a, uh, a blog fibstalker.com okay so thank you very much and um, uh, thanks for being here and if you have any questions just drop me an email okay have a good day bye bye now